Hey everyone, welcome back. This is my review, or an anime review, of Sola. God damn it. 2007's done it again. You know what I want to do? I want to look, if it's still online, I want to look online. I, a uh, list, in fact, I'm looking up right now. It looks like the past lists are still online. Good. A, a list of the... Anime that came out in 2007, okay? I just want to fucking watch them. Because 2007 has had so many fucking great anime, okay? Like, really? 2007, man. Oh my god. God damn it. Okay, here. So yeah, Sola, another 2007, more 2007 greatness, basically, okay, uh, directed by Tomoki Kobayashi, it's produced by Studio Nomad, and it originally ran from April 7, 2007 to June 30th, 2007, with a total of 13 episodes in the end, there was also an OVA, uh, two OVAs, actually. And I watched them, and they were, they're entertaining, but they weren't like... A continuation or anything, they're basically just one-off, one uh, or two-off, really. Uh, comedy, with a little, uh, yeah, mostly comedy uh, OVAs. You don't need to watch them for the rest of the series, but they are still entertaining to watch, basically. Okay. So, yes. Sola. What's the plot of Sola? Well, Sola is, is about... A boy named Yorito Morimiya, who's a normal, you know, a high school student, at least in the beginning, until he meets a girl named, a teenage girl named Matsuri Shiho, who we find out later on is a creature known as a Yaka, who are basically immortal creatures, who get killed by the sunlight, but that's basically all they get killed by. They even have rapid regeneration, as long as they're not in the sunlight. So they're basically uber badass creatures. And we also find out that Yorito's younger sister, or older sister, who's in the hospital, is also a Yaka. And we learn that Yorito was actually alive with them many years, like hundreds of years ago. But Yorito ended up dying, and and uh, her, his sister, uh, her name was uh, Aono, ended up trying to commit suicide because she loved her brother so much she didn't want to live without him. And... Uh, Matsuri had the, has the ability to revive the dead, but she, it required her turning Aono into a, yo, a Yaka because before that, uh, Aono and Yorito weren't actually Yaka, okay? And so then Aono, it doesn't really explain it in enough detail, I don't think, how she did this, but she basically used her powers to revive her brother. I'm guessing, I, I think it says something about collecting his memories, essentially, and putting it in a physical form. However, he had no memory of the ac actual memory of this, though he actually has to learn about it in the series and gradually get his memories back, essentially. And the real tragedy of the series is that he eventually has to end up dying again, and Alno has to accept this, okay? And so does Matsuri, because Matsuri was obviously falling in love with him. And everyone who he met in this lifetime forgets he even existed in the end. Okay. By the way, have, have you noticed yet that I spoil every, anything and everything in my reviews? Anyways, though. Yes. She for, everyone has to forget about it. Even his best, even his, uh, well, his really close friend, uh, Mana, who may or may not have had romantic feelings for him. I'm pretty sure that she did. Everyone forgets about him. And it's really tragic, especially with Mana, who is constantly bragging, even when she confronts Yorito about people forgetting about him, that she'll never forget about him. And immediately after that, he disappears, and she forgets. God, it's a really sad ending, basically, okay? But that's the plot of Sola. And it is so good. Like, and it's so sad, okay? Like, it has no dub, and with anime with no dub, I usually don't watch them very fast. I watch this one really fast. Uh, excuse me, like, 
no, no joke here, alright? This anime was so fucking good. It had so much, like, suspense in the end, and the ending was kind of confusing, I guess, because it's like, I, I was under the impression that, that, uh, Aona was going to end up being killed, which in turn would have killed Yorito, because Yorito requested that, but Aono did end up living in the end. I guess Yorito just sacrificed himself instead so that his, his sister could continue living. And Matri continued living as well, okay? Um, and both of them seem... Well, Aono obviously still remembers him. Matri seems to still remember him, although that is kind of unconfirmed. It's unconfirmed also if that one bearded guy and that other young Yaka remember him or not. But everyone else definitely forgot, though. Okay, and it brings up... It leads up to a really bittersweet ending, I guess. Because, you know, at least th those two still remember him, so that's something, you know. Especially since they were obviously the closest with him, except for Mana, which... You know, I would have been satisfied as long as Mana got her with the ending, as long as Mana got her memories back, seriously. Even she had to forg forget all the way. It sucked. <laughs> I mean, the ending, I mean, the series was great, the ending was great and all, but that kind of sucked. God damn it. Um, even, you know, uh, who, what was her name? Mana's younger sister, I forget what her name is. She forgot too. Hell, she even forgot. That Aono even existed, even though her and Aono were so close. Okay, and Aono does end up meeting her again and re becoming friends with her, basically. With her origami and whatnot. But there's a lot of really sad points in the end. And again, at least, you know, her sis. At least Yorito's sister and Yorito's love. Well, basically, love her. <laughs> that's what I'm going to call her. It really to him, basically. Uh, and you get, get to remember. So that's where the, like, bittersweet part comes in. If they forgot or they were killed, it would be completely sad. But if since they remember, that's why I call it bittersweet instead of completely s sad, you know? But enough harping on the ending. The series, I thought, was great, okay? It really was. Yorito's a character who doesn't have a lot, really any complex depth to him until we get to learn about who, who and or what he really is. Before that, all we know about him is that, you know, he's good friends with Mana. When he first meets Matsuri, he seems to have some sort of a crush on her later on, and he enjoys taking pictures of the sky for whatever reason, because he feels that it's, like, beautiful and free or whatever. Before we start learning about who and or what he really is and his past and whatnot, that's really all that we actually know about him, okay? Um... So, he wasn't really a too, complex, a too complex character before that, but I still think he's a really good character, okay? And Matsuri herself is actually my favorite character. She's such a fun character to watch. Um, when, she's not, when she's not being serious, she's such a fun character to watch. So entertaining. She's so funny. But when she gets serious, it's also really entertaining to watch as well, because you can tell that she you know, cares deeply for Aono. Even though the two are fighting, she still cares for her deeply. She she ob she's obviously in love with Yorito. Hell, I think she even cares for Mana now, since even though the two just met as good friends. So, she she's actually my favorite character in the series, and I don't know as well. I actually felt sorry for her in the beginning, and I thought that uh, Yorito was kind of an ass because she was in the hospital, and Yorito would hardly ever visit her, constantly making up fucking excuses. But she turned out to be quite a likable character as well, and even Mana, who, which, in the beginning of the series, I honestly thought that Mana was going to be just your standard bitchy Sundere character, but she actually turned out to be a really likable character in the end as well, which is why I was so sad when she, even she, had to forget about Yorito in the end, okay? And there were other notable characters as well, like I said before, I, Mana, uh, me, Mana's younger sister, I'm going to look her... Uh, uh, Ko Ko Koyori is the name of Mana's younger sister, okay? Um, Ko Koyori's a really likable character as well. There's also a lot, there's also other, uh, classmates of Mana who aren't really too notable, but are still there and are still, are, are still good when they are, actually are there for their purposes, okay? So, in terms of the characters that's really about it, each of the main characters, which include Yorito, 
Aono and Matsuri. Those are really the three main characters, and each one of them do have their own level of depth and complexity that make them interesting to watch, and their relationships with each other I really think is the biggest driving point for this series. And most people would probably say that Yorito himself is the only real driving point for this series. I know that people will say this because I've heard this. They say that Yorito himself is the only real driving point for this series because it's about Yorito and his past and him having to die in order to save everyone or in order to make things right but I disagree with that I feel that the biggest driving point driving point for the series is not only that that's definitely included in there but also the relationships that these three characters have with each other and how and them having to come to terms with reality especially Aono she has to come to terms with reality that with the reality that her brother is dead <laughs> okay and that he's not really supposed to exist and I'm guessing that's why everyone had to forget about him because he wasn't supposed to exist in this lifetime or in this timeline to begin with which tells me that it wasn't really a revival because if it was a truly a uh, resurrection then you think think it wouldn't matter you'd also think that he'd actually know about it which tells me it's that's not a true resurrection it was some some weird thing she did with her powers it wasn't really explained too well which is kind of one of my one of my complaints with the series I wish that was explained better okay but that but yeah the character relationship the three main character relationships with each other and I'd even go as far as say putting mana in there as well I think is the biggest driving point with this series as well as taking into consideration Yorito and his past and what who who and or what he really is and everything like that okay <clears throat> But like I said before, the only real major issue that I have with the plot is I really wish they explained better how exactly uh, I don't know ended up bringing him back. Also, I really wish that Matsuri was shown more in the uh, climax and how and how she's coping with it if she remembers, which she probably does because she is a yaka. And also that one bearded guy and that one yaka girl that keeps that was always following him. How are they doing after this? Do they remember him? You know. So, I really wish they would have covered that a little bit more. Okay. Even if they had to extend the uh, main series like an extra episode, I would have been perfectly fine with that. Okay. But, these aren't... Com these complaints aren't nearly big enough. Not nearly big enough to ruin the series. I thought the series was great. Okay, I really did. And so that's it for the plot and the characters. The animation was really fucking good in the vast majority of it. Like, this is one of those anime that does use a lot of raining scenes in order to help simulate emulate the animation, which <clears throat> excuse me, is common and cliche. Again, true, but again, doesn't matter. It works. And really, the vast majority of the animation in the series looks really good. I really think that it does. I have to comment on the art in this series. The art is something I never have to comment on. But I do. Their faces are really messed up. I'm sorry, like, especially Yoriko's. Like, I don't know what happened there. Their faces just look really ugly. I'm sorry, but they do. I mean, it's something I can look past for the overall quality of the series, obviously, but I just had to mention it in this review because it's painfully fucking noticeable. Okay, it really is. Anyways, moving on from that, though. The, uh, music is really good. There's a lot of pianos playing and a lot of violins playing. That's actually the vast majority of the music, and it all sounds so amazing and so beautiful. Okay. Uh, and the opening was was really fucking good and the ending was okay it wasn't great but it wasn't necessarily bad either all right so anyways though what are my final thoughts on this series i definitely recommend sola okay i really do um if you're into this type of anime i definitely recommend it like again it came out in 2003 or 2000 2013, 2007, and I, I need to watch more fucking anime from 2007 because this was just great. Okay, seriously, like it had it, it had its minor flaws definitely, which I mentioned previously 
in this review, but I still recommend this series, though. Because it definitely, especially towards the end, really had me on an emotional roller coaster of sorts. And I really enjoyed it. So, anyways, overall, hope you enjoyed this review, guys. See you after, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.